The colossal container ship stuck in the Suez Canal for nearly a week has been set free. Egyptian authorities say the bow of the skyscraper sized ever given was wrenched by tugboats from the canal's sandy bank, where it's been stuck since last Tuesday. It's now back in its normal position in the middle of the waterway. This brings to an end a crisis that has been blocking traffic along one of the world's busiest shipping routes. Now let's bring in economist Vincent Stama from Kiel Institute for World Economy. Welcome to DW, Mr. Stama. First off, this operation has been watched nervously around the globe. Why did it take so long to dislodge this vessel? First of all, thank you very much for having me. Um, it indeed took a, look, a long time. And partly uh, a reason for that is, is the sheer size of the container ship. The container ship in question is around 400 meters long and hence much longer than the canal is wide. So it was actually lodged in both with the bow and the stern of the ship. And that just made it uh, so much harder to free it. Now, the Suez Canal is part of the, one of the busiest trade routes on the globe. Um, do we know yet what the extent of the damage from having it blocked for this long will be? Unfortunately, we can't just quite yet quantify the exact damages. Um, we heard the figure that you know a, a large volume of goods every day and regularly passes the Suez Canal, but we don't quite know what the effect of the, of its delay of its delays are. Um, there certainly will be millions worth of uh, damages to the shipping companies that have lost, uh, that still have to pay operating costs for ships that are waiting. Uh, but the exact damages to supply chains, um, it's unfortunately too early to tell exactly. The canal is also a huge money maker for Egypt, of course. What has this meant for the country? Well, you're right. I mean, the uh, Egyptian state, Egyptian state uh, receives a lot of the revenue uh, from the Suez Canal, um, and a lot of that has been essentially lost in, in the last uh, in the last week, or at least postponed. Um, exactly how much of the revenue is lost will depend on how many ships have chosen uh, to sail around Africa instead of using the Suez Canal. Um, so again, it is hard to quantify also the economic uh, economic costs for Egypt. Um, but there will be uh, some loss of revenue for the Egyptian economy. Now, this whole debacle has really highlighted one of the major weaknesses of our globalized economy. Uh, will this have any consequences, in your opinion, on the way the shipping industry currently operates? You're right. I mean, we, we always regarded supply chains as somewhat robust, and the corona crisis and the the crisis in the Suez Canal have told us that there are some risks associated with just-in-time production, for example. And now for um, a small selection of goods, that, that probably is correct. And um, we should evaluate the stability of supply chains for few goods. Now, um, these are the weaknesses of supply chains. Uh, I would be remiss to, to not mention that there are also a lot of strengths uh, for, uh, of the global economy. And especially Germany, as an economy that is very open to global trade, uh, we benefit uh, a lot from, from uh, global supply chains. So we shouldn't just renationalize supply chains just because of the accident in the Suez Canal last week. Economist Vincent Stama, thank you very much for your analysis.